everybody. Welcome to Bakunmoto. Today we're doing something different. Uh, we're going to do some leather craft and in particular we're going to make a awesome uh, leather apron that you can use for the barbecue or for the workshop or for wherever else you want. Let's check it out. All right so the first thing we're going to do before we start cutting leather is we're actually going to make a template and I have some wrapping paper here that we really use to do that. So uh, the main apron body um, that we're going to need is actually a uh, 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters rectangle. Uh, so we will measure one out and then cut that out. Then we're going to fold it in half and start to make the symmetries in there and cut out the rest of it. For this project, I've chosen to go with a four to five ounce double shoulder um, of vegetable tan leather. I'm actually going to be dyeing it and uh, carving it uh, as is. That's why I didn't get anything finished. Um, as you can see, the leather is already kind of distressed that has these like wrinkle marks on it. So that should give us a, a little bit of a nicer finish. So um, now I'm just going to trace the um, templates and cut them out. All right, and now we have the <coughs> apron cut out of leather. We have the pockets. Uh, all the rivet holes are marked. So now we just need to punch hole them, cut some straps, dye it, carve it, and sew it back together. All right, so now that we have the uh, base for the apron, the pockets, we need some straps. So we're gonna need a neck strap. Um, this is just a, a scrap piece. So a neck strap that can get riveted up here. We need a tool strap that will get riveted kind of like so in the middle. So we can put our tools. And of course we need a waist strap that will get riveted to the sides uh, and then connect to each other. So for that, Let's first make the neck piece, since that is the easiest. Um, move these guys out of the way. Neck piece, we need a 1.5 centimeter thick uh, strap that's about 60, between 60 and 70 uh, centimeters long. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide uh, how long to actually make it. Uh, mine, I'm going to start with a 70 and then I'm going to adjust. So let's measure this out if we have actually enough on this piece. By the way, these are 8 ounce, uh, so it's not the same leather as the apron. The apron is a thinner leather. Uh, these are 8 ounce bellies, uh, vegetable tan, um, because we're going to be tanning them as well or dyeing them. It was a little too short for that strap, so maybe I'll use this one for the tool strap. Um, this one looks okay-ish, so let's see, we have 20, forty. Um, 
since that's kind of rough on that side let's actually square it off That is our next track. So now let's see how that fits on the thing. Okay, so our next trap would be like this. Now, this of course means I need to adjust it for my neck and head size. Um, I think 70 would be good, but maybe 60 would be better. So, what I'll do is I'll mark one side for the uh, rivet holes. Uh, I'll punch the holes on that, I'll punch the holes on this and kind of temporarily set some of the rivets in place and then loop the side, the other side and see how far uh, that goes. So let's punch some holes and do that. Two millimeter holes centered on these spots. It's always a good idea. Put something under. rivet holes on this side so that's how that would sit at 70 now that seems a little low so if we were to reduce that to 60 centimeters so take away uh, 10 centimeters and then another This would be like, okay, so if we did that, we have mounting around that point. So that looks like a lot smaller hole and a little difficult to get through, but fits a lot higher. So maybe the sweet spot is indeed in the middle at 65. So let's cut that at 65 length and uh, punch out the rest of the holes for it so okay and there we go we have our tank so in terms of how that fits 
I have. I'm going over my head pretty easy. Just right at my chest and should be able to tie that in pretty nicely. Okay, so next strap is done. Or rather, it's, next strap is cut. Okay. Right, after cutting some more straps and temporarily holding them in place with the rivets, this is kind of what things are starting to look like. So now we have a waist strap. We have one of these stubs. And the idea is that as it comes around, I'm gonna punch some holes in it and I'll just go in there like that and I'll keep the apron on your chest. So it looks like the right spot for the hole right about here. Okay, so let's punch that, make it a little nicer, and we more or less have all the pieces. So next would be um, uh, slicking the edges on some of these straps and preparing them for dyeing. Uh, some of the pockets we're going to uh, carve before we dye them, and uh, then dye, polish, and assembly. Okay, that is all of our pieces. So. Now let's uh, slick the edges on all these uh, straps uh, so they're ready for dyeing. Um, we're gonna slick the edges on the pockets uh, and then I'm going to carve the top pocket to have the Balkan Moto Leathercraft logo on it. You can do whatever logo you want on yourself. Uh, on there yourself. You also notice that I haven't marked the stitching um, lines. That's because what I will be doing is I will um, <clears throat> actually uh, rivet the pockets first uh, and then uh, punch the holes so that the holes perfectly line up so that I'm not guess guessing as to where the holes should be or trying to uh, make them match by measuring them out. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, let's bevel these edges, slick them and then carve. All right, so in order to slick the edges on these straps, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a beveler. I have a fairly small one. I usually, what I do with it before I end up using it is I kind of strap it on the edge of a spare piece. Uh, you can buy strapping boards for this, but this seems to do okay of a job. And then what you do is you just follow the edge. And this will peel off a nice little piece off the edge so that we can then slick it, make it look nice and professional. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but that's essentially, there's a bevel now on the edge, it's not just a straight cut. And then what we do is literally wet it just a little bit and use a slicker to then slick that edge. I like doing this before I dye the leather. Um, it makes the final product a little bit better. You could do it later on, you could use um, there's like products that are meant for this, um, like different coats and whatnot, and gum. Uh, but water works just fine. And once you've run it a few more times, you essentially get a shiny edge on there and nice and smooth. So once it's dyed, it becomes kind of like plastic looking almost. Very professional. Uh, the idea here is not to wet it too much because then you just end up turning the leather into mush. You want it to retain a little bit of that rigidity.
and there we go. So this is more or less slicked. Um, you don't need to do much more than that at this point. Uh, once we have the piece dyed, we'll have a much better result. I mean, for comparison, this is kind of what the edge is looking like. I don't know if the uh, camera can catch that, but that's what it is. So now we just got to do it all. Okay, now that all the edges are slicked, um, time to do some carving. And we're going to do the top pocket. So let's do that. All right, so I have the pattern traced out on tracing paper. I have the pocket. So what we're going to do is try to keep this as steady as possible. And actually, I'm just going to put some uh, rivet, or some holes in here and stick rivets through it so it stays to the leather. And then I'm just going to tape it down, trace it with the owl. Then we'll take it off, wet it a little bit, deepen the tracing, and then we're going to carve it further. So let's do that. kind of the first trace of the pattern. So now let's deepen some of those grooves and uh, double up the border and we should be good. traced okay so now let's actually carve it in order to do that we're going to wet it and use the stamping tools Traced. Now let's carve it. Top pocket is carved. Now we just have to let it dry. In the meantime, let's start dyeing the rest of the components. All right, so now that everything is cut, while we're waiting for the top pocket to dry up, we're gonna start dyeing the rest of it, the <coughs> apron. Um, for that, I've decided I'm going to use uh, Feebing's Light Brown Professional Dye. Uh, a few things to mention. Uh, the pockets and the apron, uh, as well as uh, these <coughs> ring holders, are all from the same leather. So I expect the, those pieces to be the same color. The straps, however, are from a different piece of leather, uh, so I expect that to color a little bit differently. 
Uh, which is fine because if we have a little bit of contrast between the straps and the um, main piece, that would actually be quite nice. So first, let's add some dye into my uh, container over here. And for the purpose, we're going to try not to make a mess. Even though I know we will, <laughs> because I don't know why Feebing does this, but these bottles are incredibly difficult to pour stuff out of without making a mess. As you can see, Okay, so not too much mess, and let's start dyeing. So let's start with the small things, just so I can keep them out of the way, um, and then do the bigger pieces. Let's do these, uh, the neck strap and the back, the waist strap first. In order to dye, I'm just going to use a simple sponge. Okay, once the strap is fully soaked with dye, we can put it off to the side to dry. And we can always add more layers to make sure that it's nice and even. But for now, let's do one layer at a time. All the pieces are dyed um, and drying so it's still wet as you can see um, but that being said a lot of the texture of the leather itself is coming out so all these wrinkles that you see so a lot more character even these like little spots those are probably like bug bites or something uh, the top pocket I dyed that as well but it's still quite wet that's why it looks that dark so let's come back in a few hours and see how this is when it's dry so we can wax it and polish it and then start assembling. All right, this is after about two hours of drying. The top pocket is still quite wet, so that's gonna stay. These pockets are almost completely dry. Um, this strap has a little more in it, so we'll give it overnight to dry. This strap is still drying. So really, 
uh, we'll give it overnight to fully dry and then tomorrow we can start assembling um, hopefully the leather is not too stiff um, and I can get it to be a little bit softer so I can actually move with it because I think uh, in retrospect uh, four to five ounce might be too thick but we'll see so for now let's let it dry more okay it's the next morning everything is nice and dry and the color is more or less even the straps have a little bit of a, a darker spots as you can see here but that's okay because well I could run another coat on top to get them nice and even uh, brown but uh, I actually like it this way a little better there's a little bit more discoloration uh, so that makes a little more character so next what we're going to do is I'm going to use a leather balm with the atom, atom wax in it to uh, essentially moisturize and polish all the leather pieces um, and then after that we're going to buff them out uh, we're going to try to soften the main apron up a little bit because it is quite stiff right now or rather not as soft as I would like it to be just to be able to move in it and then we're going to start assembling so let's uh, polish everything up all right so to apply the leather balm what we're going to do is use two towels one dirty ish and one clean um, the dirty one we will use to apply and literally just soak it up and apply nice even coats of this stuff. It actually smells really good. Um, and just rub it in there. It will haze up uh, first and stiffen up, but then once we polish it, it's gonna look really good. Getting all the nooks and crannies. The other thing about this is don't forget the edges. Um, and in some cases, like on belts, I sometimes do the back side as well, just to seal the leather a little better. Okay, so this piece is done. While that's drying, let's do the rest of them. Uh, and then we're gonna polish them up, uh, slick the edges, uh, just to make sure that all the little strands uh, are gone. Uh, and then make sure that uh, they soften up. So let's do the rest, and I'll show you what it looked like afterwards. All right, so I've done the uh, most of the pieces, except for the apron and one of the pockets. And just to show you the difference, so this is after the bomb dries. And what happens when you buff it, it becomes nice and shiny. And brings up all that leather character. So, there we go. So that's like substantially shinier. Um, the other thing that I was talking about is with the edges, so for those instead of using the cloth I use the slicker to buff them up so that seals them and creates a nice nice smooth finish. Um, just it, It's kind of hard to see the difference so here's a I've done one of the pockets and the other one I haven't uh, so let's buff this one out just so we can see the the full difference. Oh, there we go. So that's much more. This is very dull. This is like nice and shiny, and the color on it is much, much better. So 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that these are nice and flexible as well, so that we can actually have some comfort in this thing. And uh, yeah, so let's polish everything, and we'll come back to see where we're at. All right, all the little pieces are polished. Uh, I ended up doing two coats of uh, the Atom uh, Wax and uh, Leather Balm. A uh, few things to mention uh, for the straps. I ended up doing the back sides as well. Um, for this particular one because the tools are going to be going in and out. And for these ones because they're uh, more or less on the outside. So they're going to be wrapping around you. The pockets and stuff I haven't. So the back side is just dyed. Uh, so you can kind of see the, the, the difference that that made in terms of um, you can already see kind of how much shinier the pockets are versus the main leather. So uh, let's polish the apron and then we're going to start assembling. All right, and this is after the polish and wax on the main apron. It looks really good. Um, the only thing, it's still a little bit stiff, so I'm just going to, you know, massage it and crush it a little. It actually ended up developing a nice pull. So if you look at like this the dark area here, if you were to pinch it, yeah, wait. It develops these like white, like lighter areas, which will darken after a while, but it gives it a really nice patina. So I'm just gonna scruff it up uh, just to make it a little softer so it's a little more comfortable to wear. And then we're gonna start assembling. There we go. All right, so this is after massaging the leather a little bit more. Breaking it down, you can see it's already developed a really nice patina and it's much, much softer. Uh, it already has like little, little like wrinkles and stuff. So we're ready to start assembling. Uh, we're gonna start by doing the <coughs> left pocket, or right pocket rather, with the uh, towel holder on it. Uh, then we're gonna do the uh, other pocket since, or well, actually no, sorry. First we're gonna do the straps, just so we can actually try it out. Uh, and see how it fits. So let's get some rivets and let's put those straps on. Now that the neck strap and the waist straps are attached, we have an actual apron. So let's try it on. All right, and this is the apron. So it fits pretty well. Fits all right. In terms of the attachment mechanism, simple. Boom, keeps it on you. You can walk with it. Sitting is a little bit of a issue but it will loosen up over time and make it uh, more smoother and really you're not sitting down when you're doing barbecue you're standing up or you're working um, if you're using it as a tool shop apron so let's attach the rest of the stuff all right and this is everything after it's been riveted on so now the final step is to do the stitching holes down the edge of the pockets as well as the top pocket and stitch them together. And this is done. All right, pockets are hole punched, ready for stitching. And I think I'm gonna use this light yellow just to contrast it and match the brass pieces a little better. And uh, almost done. All right, and after final stitching, this is what the final product looks like. Uh, it's actually quite epic. I'm quite happy with the result. Uh, pockets are a little tight, but they'll loosen up. Top pocket is okay. Let me show you how it fits uh, when you wear it. Here is for a towel. So, if you have a towel, everyone needs a towel when they're going to barbecue. Boom, so you 
to just wipe your hands, move on. And then this one is actually for the most important of tools, a bottle opener. So, made a little snap button. There you go, so you can open your bottles. And that's it. Oh, and top pocket. When you're wearing this, it's kind of difficult to reach your pants pocket, your phone, perfectly in there. All right, so this is it. This is the leather apron. Happy cooking.